Greetings, one players. Welcome into the One Play Sports Spectrum for December's The Legends Club Show with our good friends at World Football Legends. Don't forget, for just $15 a year, you can have the chance to go to the UK to watch a Premier League game with the legend of your choice once, of course, the borders open up. And when the borders do open up, I tell you what, I know firsthand, the legends can't wait to come back to Asia. And why wouldn't they? All the great bars and restaurants in Singapore that we're in partnership with, there's so many to mention. Muddy Murphy's, Sahara, we've got the Exchange Bar, our good friends at Heroes. I can't forget Heroes or Smith's Fish and Chips. Loads of them and all our other sponsors as well, including, let's not forget, our dear friends at, not what you're thinking, it's not that one, it's Alad. Aladdin, not Aladdin. I think um, that must be some copyright issue. But that's our lucky charm here on the Legends Club, uh, the genie of the lamp. And we need some luck because a new format to the Legends Club show this month, we're going to uh, chop, it, chop it up into four little segments. So our first week uh, segment you're about to see now. The second week will be all our wall of Zoomers getting their chance, all the Legends Club members to ask Nigel questions. And we've got a surprise for you in week three, followed by in week four. I'll cover the ground with Nigel that wasn't covered with the questions that were asked to him on what's been uh, a really good evening of recording with Mr. Nigel Winterburn, the Arsenal legend, who joins us live now. Welcome to the Legends Club, Nigel, and thanks for being our man for December. Are you gearing up for the most extraordinary Christmas on record? It's, it's the, a Christmas of a lifetime, this, isn't it? It's, it's every day's Christmas well, almost, stuck at home. Every, yeah, well, every day is we're in, well, we're not in lockdown, but it, it feels like it. I think Christmas is going to be slightly strange this year, but uh, hopefully we'll all be able to get together in limited numbers, but uh, listen, long as we're all staying safe, I think that's the main thing. Quite right, and thanks to all the first responders and the emergency workers that put their lives on the line during this COVID-19 pandemic, whether it's in Asia, Europe, or anywhere in the world. Uh, just a quick question, have you watched more or less football during lockdown? Do you, have you watch more now with this COVID-19 situation than you did before? I would say I probably have watched more, but I've been a bit more selective, so, I've watched more of the Premier League games, but I haven't watched many, or if any, of the international games. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd say I have watched more, but uh, I'm being a little bit selective, else it can completely take control of your life. Yeah, and I suppose even though lots of people are stuck at home all the time, it can't just be all about watching football, but... I'm going to need your expertise on all levels of the Premier League, so it's a good job you've been watching because our first um, mini-show, if you like, for December on the Legends Club is a whole host of predictions. We're doing this one first, of course, but I've spread them out so some of the games, obviously, are in a week or two weeks' time, including a certain North London derby. First North London derby of the season, I think, and that last one was very strange, wasn't it? When they played it under lockdown at the end of last year. So that'll be one of the games we preview and a couple of uh, season-wide and general predictions from you, Nigel. So are you ready? You've got the... You've got the, the uh, Lucky Charm, the Aladdin Lamp, to hopefully uh, point you in the right direction. Are you good at predictions, usually? Um, I'm not too bad, but maybe you'll come back to me after my predictions and let me know whether they were any good or not. I will. I, well, I do write them down. This isn't one of those things where I just write them down and throw the bit of paper away. I'll be writing them down and um, either writing you a thank you card or, or sending you something nasty in the mail if you get them all wrong. So let's crack on. Everton against Leeds. Everton... It's like so many teams. I mean, the trouble with football nowadays, it's very knee-jerky, isn't it? A team has two good games and everyone's saying, oh, Villa could win the title this season, another Leicester, and then it can go wrong very quickly. And Everton are a bit like that. They started everyone going, oh, Ancelotti's a miracle worker. They've faded away a bit. And um, Leeds, all you know with them is you're going to get games with lots of goals, seemingly. What's your pick here and correct score? Well, I, I think you're right, but they've both been exciting to, to watch this season already. And um, it wouldn't surprise me if that was a score draw. So I'm going to go 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. So a score draw, that makes sense. I can see that one happening. Uh, on Sunday, the Sunday just coming as this goes live, Southampton against Manchester United. Now, Manchester United recently beat West Brom in one of the worst Premier League games I have ever watched. It was desperate. Um, he's clearly on borrowed time there, Solskjaer, isn't he? They're just waiting for the moment to pull the trigger on Pochettino. Uh, are they going to go to Southampton and get a results? Because even in Fergie's time, in the United heyday, the Dell, as it was then, was somewhere they didn't have the best of luck most of the time. Yeah, but Southampton are doing tremendously well this season. But they are a funny team because uh, last season they really did struggle to win a lot of games at home. And... I just got a sneaky feeling that Man United are going to sneak this one. Uh, I don't know why, because they haven't been impressive uh, this season at all. 
Well, I'm going to go Southampton one, Man United two. Yeah, and what do you make of the manager, Ralph, Ralphie boy? Uh, he's sort of, again, well, flown a bit under the radar, he's, but he's doing the business, isn't he? He has gone under, yeah, he's gone under the radar. I can remember, you know, everybody was asking for, I think it was 9-0, they was asking for him to be sacked. But from, from there on, uh, you know, he's got some good team shape, he's got his team playing for him, he's got a system, and, uh, you know, they're sitting well up uh, in the top echelons, of the of the league, and uh, they're gonna they're looking as if they're gonna make it very very difficult to be beaten this season. Yeah, Ralph Hassenhuttle, and that's incredible. You mentioned that I'd forgotten about that. That was really in a strange way the turning point for him, wasn't it? Once he survived that, it was almost like, well, if I can survive a nine 0 I can survive anything. And it's almost as if the, the shackles came off a little bit, and they seem to over the, the couple of weeks subsequent to that drubbing at the hands of Leicester, they seem to get it going right. So we've got your Southampton and United uh, now. Another game that's coming up on. Sunday. Big one this. Chelsea against Spurs. Lampard against uh, Mourinho. Is this another Tottenham full storm, Nigel? Or is this finally the year? Because I mean, Mourinho, the only way Mourinho can salvage his reputation to get it back to post-Porto and early Chelsea levels, I think, is if he wins the league with Spurs. I mean, you know, if he does what every Spurs manager seems to do, which is sparkle in short, sharp bursts and then fade away, uh, I think he might be on the scrap heap after this job. What's happening here? Ooh. Well, I can't believe that you're asking an Arsenal guy if Tottenham can win the league. Well, come uh, on. You're not going to get, you're not gonna get a you... positive response from me from that one. I know, no, but... I don't believe they can. Don't. Okay. I, f I do think Mourinho has got them uh, in uh, terrific shape in terms of organisation. They've got players that can score goals. I really do like the look of Chelsea, though, as well. I think they're ex an exciting team. Uh, to watch and I think Chelsea again are going to win this game and I'm going to go for 2-1 to Chelsea 2-1 to Chelsea and that's that's with a neutral unbiased cap on it's not the Arsenal factor that's it that's a hard well, you'll, I'll leave you to work that one out okay well bear in mind you just said that the next game I'm going to go ask you to predict is a week later Spurs against Arsenal first North London derby of the season I remember that the last North London derby of last season, which again I think was at White Hart Lane, like this one will be. It was a strange old game that because Arsenal bossed it and still ended up losing. Uh, what's going to happen when they meet for the first time this season in a couple of weeks? Well, I have a sneaky fear that this is going to be tight. Uh, it's not going to be edgy because we don't think there's going to be any supporters there. The maximum that could be there with a bit of luck is, is maybe yeah. 4,000. That's not going to that's not going to affect either team. So I'll, I'm going to say a score draw, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, it was a very entertaining game, that game that Spurs won in the, the corresponding fixture last season. Um, and um, on the subject of Spurs against Arsenal, when you say you take a 1-1, one, one, as a player, did you ever go to White Hart Lane and you're in the dressing room before and saying, oh, we take a 1-1 one, one now? I mean, that's, that's so no. much times have changed, doesn't it? No, because my first game at White Hart Lane, I actually scored and we won 3-2. So I'd, 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 I'd never take a draw. I'd always take the victory. OK. We haven't mentioned Liverpool yet, so we should. Because, again, um, they've not been as awe-inspiring. But let's not forget, their, as we record this now, level on points uh, at the top of the league with Tottenham. Uh, 12th of December, they're at Fulham. Um, is it a fait accompli that Fulham are going to go down and are Liverpool going to... We talked about a 9 nil earlier, and I seem to remember... Do I remember... Did Ray Houghton know? There, there was a game in the 80s where Liverpool beat Fulham 9 nil. It seems to ring a bell with me, that, that great Liverpool team in the late 80s, early 90s. Are we going to get a cricket score at Craven Cottage? I don't think we're going to get a cricket score, uh, but Scotty Parker's got to find a way that Fulham can create chances but not be so poor de defensively. Um, and even with uh, Liverpool's injury problems, I think their attacking options are sensational. I can't see anything but a Liverpool victory. And I'm, I'm going to go... Do you know what? I'm going to be bold. I'm going to go a nil four. Nil four. I think lots of people will be thinking they're going to get the abacus out for that one. But stranger things have happened. We've had some banana mm. scores, haven't we, throughout the course of the season already. Right, and we'll finish off with some generic predictions. Uh, not so much a crystal ball, but a crystal Aladdin lamp. Uh, first manager to go, Nigel. Who is it going to be? Uh, maybe Sean Dyche at Burnley. Oh. Although I don't see anybody under real pressure unless 
full and panic, uh, and they don't give Scotty Parker uh, a chance as well. So I'll maybe put those two joint together. And it's, I think it's helping managers, isn't it? You've already alluded to it earlier. The fact there are no fans in the stadiums helps the managers, doesn't it? Because you don't get that yeah, poisonous and, atmosphere. And, it, it, and also as well, it's not something that I do particularly like to predict because it's not a nice subject, is it, that feeling that yeah. a manager should be sacked. But we all know it's part of the game. You know, those predictions are always uh, out there. But... You know what? A team could have a poor run that's sitting quite comfortable at the moment and the board panic, and it'll be somebody that we don't expect it to be. But at the moment, it, I, my gut feeling, it, you know, it, 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 you know, it, but I don't know, something seems quite not quite right at Burnley, uh, but it could easily be also as well, Scotty Parker at Fulham, if he can't turn things around and maybe they think more experienced manager to give us a chance, but even that's not a guarantee. Yeah. I need to, you're right, it's a bit too tabloidy the way I ask that question. I'm going to stop saying who's the next manager to be sacked. I'm going to rephrase it as what's going to be the next club to get a new manager? Sounds nicer that way, doesn't it? I <laughs> it think sounds I, nice. It yeah. sounds more polite, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, who are the champions? Who are going to be champions this season? The Liverpool are going to retain. How many times have we seen how difficult it is for sides to retain the title? Are Liverpool going to manage it? Well, this season is really weird, but I am going to pick Liverpool. I think. Um, now we've had a chance to, you know, eight or nine games in, we've had a little look. Liverpool are a well-drilled machine that have not only now got the belief that they can win the Premier League title, because obviously they have last season, they're now proven as well that they're going to be difficult to beat, even with all the injuries. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to take Liverpool, although. What I'm hoping is this season's going to be a lot closer than last season. So I'm hoping they'll, that there'll be a, at least a couple of teams that attach themselves to Liverpool uh, and, and make it really interesting. And the problem with the, the, that being a tight title race, Manchester City just don't appear to be at the races. Guardiola signed the new contract, but it's, you talk about a strange old season. Manchester City epitomise that, don't they? One week they look like their old selves, and the next week you, you think it's an imposter sitting in the dugout and not Pep Guardiola. Well, you, you're watching Man City and they're still moving the ball. They're, they, you know, they look exciting, but they can't score goals. Mm. And if anybody told me that Manchester City cannot score goals, you know, I think you'd be watching a different game to me. But uh, that seems to be their problem. And then they're a little bit flaky defensively. They concede. Uh, and, then, and at the moment, they just can't get back into games. Mm. And last but by no means least, because you're such a nice guy, Nigel, I will rephrase this question uh, differently. I'm not going to say, give me one team other than Fulham that's going to go down. I'm going to say, name one team other than Fulham that will be playing in the championship next season. Well, I think you all, when you, yeah, you know, I'd love all the teams that came up to be able to stay up, almost have like a free pass for a season. But I also feel that West Brom are really going to struggle. Uh, mm. this season as well so I said it at the start of the season I'm not going to change my mind the two teams that I thought would go down were, were uh, Fulham and West Brom and I couldn't make my mind up on the, on the third team because I think that's going to really be an interesting fight but so uh, as I can't say Fulham I'll say uh, West Brom and Jalvian yeah, OK, we, we didn't mention Slaven Bilic, did we, in that manager conversation? There's been all kind of, the press make this stuff up, don't they? But there's stories have been at, uh, about him as well in the last couple of weeks. And incidentally, this is one of my favourite footballing stats, Nigel. Do you know this? And it actually came when the Premier League was uh, 22 teams, which you'll remember, I think, during your playing days, wasn't it, at the start of the, the, um, the 90s? It's only ever happened once that the three teams that have come up have, been this, have gone straight back down. And I think the season that happened, there were four teams that went down, or five teams maybe even that went down that year. It's incredible um, to think that it's only ever happened once that the ones that have gone up have come straight back down. More often than not, one or two seem to survive. Yeah, well, I think because we... Well, personally, I want the Premier League to keep evolving, so... I want to see those teams that come up try and uh, stay up. But it is an interesting stat. I, I actually didn't uh, know that. It's, it yeah. surprises me. But, you know, we're looking this season, we're already thinking, I think Leeds will have... You know, I thought Leeds might struggle this season because I watched them a lot last season and they couldn't convert any chances. And I thought 
the Premier League is is much more ruthless. But already they're proving that you know, okay, they might concede goals, but they're quite capable of scoring as well. So um, I think that stat will 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 stay intact for the, for this season as well. I don't think all three of those teams will go back down. So, Nigel, I've written all these down. They're all on the record. Everyone out there in One Play Sports and the Legends Club members' land will know them. And in Winterburn, we trust. I'm following you in, Nigel. I'm right behind you. We'll see how Nigel gets on. And I might be able to give him some stick because Nigel's going to join us throughout the course of the month. He's very kindly given us his time. He'll be chatting in the next instalment that will be published next week with our wall of Zoomers. All the Legends Club members will be asking him their questions. We've got a special surprise with some junior legends for Nigel in week three and in the final instalment installment of Nigel Winterburn's The Legends Club Month. I'll be, uh, I'm going to ask the questions, and there won't be many of them left by the time we're finished with him, but I'm going to ask the questions about his career uh, that have still got to be gone over before we can say farewell to Nigel for the month of December. For, for now, for this week, it's many thanks to Nigel Winterburn, and thanks to you for watching. Don't forget, 15 US dollars a year, and you, like me, can be speaking to that man, Nigel Winterburn, on a regular basis. You might even get a chance to go and watch a Premier League game with Nigel Winterburn over there in the the UK and Nigel I'm sure will be among all the legends hopefully when the borders are back open coming back to greet his fans in Southeast Asia. 15 US dollars a year. Make sure you check out the website. I keep getting in trouble for saying 15 US dollars a month. 15 US dollars a year. Makes it, it's, it's brilliant isn't it? Much better than 15 US dollars a month. Check out the website at the Legends Club and thanks to all our sponsors. I must give them a quick mention. Muddy Murphy's, Match Attacks, Turkish Airlines, Picketin, Exchange Bar, the Els Club Golf Course, Little League, Expat Living, our friends at Trouble Brewing, Star Balm, Smith's Fish and Chips, best fish and chips in Southeast Asia, Heroes, the Resolve Sports Agency in Uganda, Sahara and Nestia. I tell you what, the, the best job in Singapore is the person who's dealing with the sponsorship for this Legends Club. Look at that magnificent wall of world-class brands. And we had a magnificent legend on the line as well with Nigel Winterburn. Don't forget, it'll be the wall of Zoom next week and the Junior Legends the week after that. Keep with us on One Play Sports and we'll see you next time. Stay safe.